Donald Trump right now. <laughs> Let's say Donald Trump was right here, right in front of you, right? What <laughs> would you tell him in terms of, uh, of DACA or just immigration in general? Uh, what would you uh, express to him? So if Donald Trump was standing right in front of me, um, it's, a, it's a tough question, obviously. Um, if Donald Trump was in front of my face, I'd kick him in the face. President Trump is expected to end an Obama-era program that protects young undocumented immigrants who were brought to the U.S. as children from being deported. President Trump's plan would affect some 800,000 so-called dreamers studying and working in the U.S. On September 5th, 2017, the Trump administration announced the termination of DACA. Since then, 800,000 dreamers have been fighting for their future all over the U.S. About a month ago, America's Voice, a web and blog site for all immigration reform news, contacted my sister and I to take part in their local work project. Hello? My name is Nicole Romero. I'm 21 years old, and I am one of the 800,000 undocumented people in this country fighting for my future. I remember the first time that I ever understood what undocumented meant. I was 16 and I was watching all my friends obtain their, uh, sorry. You got this. You're doing great. Growing up feeling ashamed and feeling like keeping my status in this country had to be a secret, um, I always wanted someone to look up to who was in my situation and could talk freely about their story. But growing up, there, was, there wasn't a person like that. No one just flat out said, hey, I'm undocumented. And, and surely enough, like it was never documented. Um, and so I've always wanted to tell that story. But up until this moment, like there, there, hasn't, there has never been that opportunity. Before I was 16 and, you know, I, I was experiencing all my friends and everyone in high school getting jobs and, their, and you know, studying for their permits. I was 13 and we, we were dropping off a family friend and that night they happened to do a checkpoint and our family car got stopped. At that moment, I think my heart kind of knew that something was going to go terribly wrong. Um, but it wasn't until like the officer came and asked for license of registration. I kind of realized like we didn't have documentation and I think that's when it hit me like my life could take a whole 360 turn. That's when it went into full effect. I was like I'm different and this affects me. This affects my life here. It jeopardizes my life here every day. After that incident, I, I feel like I was kind of traumatized with the police and I didn't want to leave my house and I didn't want to go out. And I just was scared. I, I was scared that I was going to be deported. I was scared that I was going to be ripped away from my parents, from my sister. In 2012, DACA was put into place. This allowed me, just a regular 16-year-old teenager from New Jersey, to pursue my dreams. It was in February when uh, my uh, work authorization card came in the mail. And we're looking at it and like being like thrilled because one like it had my picture on it and I was like I can work here but in the fine print it says like not valid for like re-entry of the USA so I don't I've never been treated differently um, not that I would because no one no one really has ever known about me about who I really am but up until recently I've been wanting to feel accepted for who I am which is an undocumented young person. Late in November, one contacted me and told me that America's Voice was doing this thing where they were trying to get as many states as they could to throw these um, these dinner parties. Um, the original idea was to have local people invite the representatives, invite you know people of their town, friends and family to come and talk about you know dreamers and really urging our representatives to support DACA. Um, so when he contacted me, I, I remember seeing the emails for months and I chose to ignore it because I think in my head I felt like what could I do and so to speak I wasn't really ready to come out and tell people flat out like hey I'm undocumented. When my sister and I first sat down and started planning this event it felt like there wasn't a place to start. How could we possibly get anybody to care about this? We decided to take this into our city of Patterson, New Jersey. 
So this is day one of planning. I feel like as volunteers, we should be going up to people and be like, so what do you think of the event? Like, are you calling people? Like, just like trying to interact with them yeah. and like trying to get them mm -hmm. going. Yeah. So lo que vamos a hacer es vamos a comprar un canvas grandísimo. Y el nombre de nuestro evento se va a decir um, hashtag documented. Como so after many conversations, we came up with documented. We knew that we wanted to have everyone write on a banner stating a reason why they supported the DREAM Act. So just like that, we began to email organizations asking for their help to house our event. We called our friends and families. A DACA event? Yeah, for sure. We want to make this event very helpful. We paid visits and asked for help of anyone who would listen. We bought supplies. We painted. We posted. We passed out flyers. And we did it all as a team. Well, the point of this event today was to gather enough people from our community and really sit down, hang out, and talk about what's going on. We have opened our doors today in support of DACA because we refuse to sit idly by while 700,000 humans are threatened with revocation of legal status um, from the only home that most have ever known. DACA is in limbo. We wanted people to sign our banner, stating a reason why they care about DACA, why other people need to care about DACA. And we also want to make calls to our representative urging him to support the DREAM Act. I'm really strongly urging you to pass it by the end of the year. I know many people who are affected by this. We have a right to have a voice in what goes on and what affects us directly. The importance of this event is to show not only the politicians, but to show people around us, our friends, our families, that sometimes, you know, we're not alone. This is their home, and for someone to try to take away their rights to go to school or to drive, it's, it's not really right. You know, how would you feel if you were living in fear every day of your life? Not only just to go to school, but just to wake up in this country. The bottom line is we're all human beings, and the fact that we're attacking people who, to no fault of their own, happen to be in this land undocumented, supposedly, doesn't make them any less human. As, as an educator, seeing them in school, you can't tell a difference between a, a, a dreamer and uh, a person or a student who has U.S. citizenship who was born in the United States. They're not enemy of our country. They know nothing else but the United States. It's really important that we show, you know, ourselves and, you know, just the politicians that we're together and that uh, we're, we're going to see this through. Because it's not just affecting me as one person, it's affecting 22,000 DACA recipients in New Jersey. If DACA, if the DREAM Act is passed, if it's not terminated, and it provides every DACA recipient, every DREAMer, the possibility to become a citizen in this country, I think a lot of the fears and insecurities I feel about my status and my life here would go away. For the past couple of months, I've been feeling like the peace in feeling free and feeling safe is expiring. This whole entire point of this event is to gather enough people who are willing to listen, who are willing to help, who are willing to call, to share, and to understand. To tell our state representatives that DACA needs to be supported, that they need to support it. Documented was an event we planned with the help from America's Voice and Oasis, a haven for women and children. This event would not have been made possible without the sacrifices and generosity of so many wonderful people on our team.